Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a wireless controller from our friends over at Easy SMX. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a controller from Easy SMX. Now the model for this one is a little bit confusing because there's tons of part numbers on the side, but this is the model KC-8236. And there's a few different variations of this available on the market. So there is a gloss black version, there is a camo version, a green camo version, a white camo version, and a blue camo version. And the one we've got is actually the red camo version, so we'll be taking a look at that now. Let's go through the unboxing process, all that kind of stuff. Packaging wise, exactly the same as what we expect from Easy SMX. Uh, no frills, just basically does what it needs to do, and that is to transport the controller without it getting damaged. So as we take a look inside, you can see we've got the red camo look. Now obviously this isn't going to be for everyone. I totally understand that. Some people just want that plain classic look. But again, if you want to, you can do. There is an option for the plain black. So if you like your kind of Xbox controller style and you're not quite into the, uh, the camo print, then again, there's plenty of options. This does retail at the moment in a region of about £20 here in the UK. I will be putting some affiliated links in the video description so you can check out it for yourself. And again, if you want to choose a different colour, there's tons and tons to choose from. This is, for me, one of the best value controllers on the market. It does cover a lot of bases, so it's compatible with PC, PlayStation 3, and also Android devices via an on-the-go connector, and is also wired as well. So if you want to, you can use this as a wired controller or you can use it as a wireless controller. So if you're maybe using it with your PS3 or your PC and you're sat back and you're on a sofa or something, you can be up to 10 meters away. Obviously, you're gonna need pretty darn good eyesight for that, but essentially it is possible. So you don't actually have to have the PC necessarily in the same room as you to be able to play on a TV. Very much like how Steam controllers work, I guess. So wired connection, you can do that. There is actually a, a cable included in the box, which actually will go through the rest of what we get in the box. So we get the plastic housing, which the controller comes in, and we also get our 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi dongle. Now it's not the same as a traditional Wi-Fi, but it works on the same principle. So this is actually the device which is synchronized with this from the factory. So all you need to do, if you want to use it in wireless mode, is to take the cap off and plug this into a compatible USB socket. So on the go connection for Android phones, straight into a PlayStation 3 or straight into a PC in a USB 2 or USB 3 port. So that's the easy part, no problem. And when that's plugged in, there's a little red LED which shows you that it's working. And then all you need to do is with the controller itself, when it's plugged in, is just press the home button and the controller will come to life. Now, you do need to charge this before you use it and you can get around about two hours of charge, gives you around about eight to 10 hours use on the controller itself. And that is with everything on, all the rumble, all that kind of stuff. And it does actually have dual rumble effects. So you've got two motors, one on this side, one on this side. So when you're playing games that support the feedback feature, then you will get that rumble sensation in the gamepad. You can as well, if you want to, in wireless mode, if you want to actually charge it at the same time, you can plug in the included USB cable, which is a micro USB type cable, which again, if you wanted a longer one, then you could probably get one very, very easily. This one is relatively short, around about 18 inches, I guess, but this is designed so you can just plug it into the back here, plug that into your PC, or whatever it is, and you can leave it charging. Now, it doesn't have to be charging from a PC. You can use power banks, all that kind of stuff, or just a regular phone charger. That will do exactly the same job and will actually charge it probably a little bit quicker. Again, do get up to around about eight to 10 hours of full use out of this from a two hour charge. But you don't have to completely charge it for two hours. I find that even just plugging it in for about five to 10 minutes gives you a good couple of hours usage with the controller. I have actually used this quite a bit already in games such as Rocket League and also the new Cyberpunk 2077. And either way, whether wired or wireless, exactly the same. There doesn't seem to be any perceivable lag between the two. And actually at certain points when I was playing the game, I was so engrossed, I didn't actually realize which it was, whether it was wired or wireless. So that goes some way of showing how good the actual stable wireless connection is. So let's get back to what was actually in the box before I got completely sidetracked. So as usual with Easy SMX, you get the uh, little welcome guide and also if you've got any problems, there's information to contact them. And also there's a QR code, which uh, I guess you could probably scan the screen now if you want to, and that will give you a voucher of up to $10 on their site. Also included is a installation guide or pamphlet. And again, there is up to 20% QR code on the back of that. So if you want to, feel free to scan the screen now. You can go ahead and do that. But this is really simple, so it tells you how to go through the connectivity, what all the buttons do, how to set up for PlayStation 3, how to set up for Android devices, and how to set up for PC. 
Now, essentially, it's very, very simple. All you need to do in the standard moment when it's turned on, it's in the kind of Xbox controller style. So usual kind of deal where all the buttons make sense as they have done for many, many years on the Xbox. If you want to change it to the PS3 layout, all you do is press and hold the home button for about six seconds until the lights change color. You're probably seeing this from some B-roll at the moment. Then if you want to change it again to the Android version, then all you can do, press and hold for six seconds and you'll see the lights change and it's in an Android mode. And then press it again and it will then revert back into the standard Xbox 360 type mode. So that's it, it's pretty simple. Now overall, build quality wise, it's really good. There's no obvious creaking or flexing in the actual controller itself. And all of the buttons have got a nice reassuring click to them. And the triggers themselves are analog as well. So in driving games, that kind of thing, you can kind of ease off the gas or gently tap the brakes, that kind of thing. They're not a kind of simple on off controller as you do get on some of the cheaper models. So analog controls, you've also got the digital buttons on the top. You've got your normal thumbsticks. So pretty much what you expect. And from what I can tell from using these controllers over the past couple of years now, they don't really seem to suffer too much from drift, which is a common problem on a lot of joysticks. Maybe it's because I don't game as much as I should do, but certainly I haven't found any of these yet to have any controller drift, which is really nice. And all the clicky buttons feel very uniform. Sometimes you find with some controllers, one of the thumbsticks feels a little bit more kind of uh, less precise, I would say, than the others, but these both feel exactly the same. So that kind of muscle memory really does kick in quite quickly. The one thing I would say is with the actual directional D-pad, that in my opinion is a little bit on the soft side. I prefer it to be a little bit more of a defined click and a little bit more of a kind of edge on the side. So the kind of thumb roll off works, but that is totally down to personal preference. Certainly is completely functional and works entirely as it should do. Just from my own personal preference to be exactly like the original Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, for me, it needs to be a little bit more tactile, but again, it certainly does the job very, very well. So that is pretty much it. That is all the features. Again, wireless connectivity, if you want to, you can use it wired if you, if you want to. As regard to power saving, now when you've got this actually connected to PC and you're using it and you're in the wireless mode, there is a power saving feature, but it doesn't kick in until about five minutes. So if you stop playing and you just put your controller to one side, it'll stay on for about five minutes until then it times out. If you want to turn the controller off a lot quicker, what you can do is obviously when you finish playing your game, put it down and unplug the wireless device. When you unplug that, after about 30 seconds or so, it will completely shut down. So if you're maybe getting this and you plug it in and you're leaving the controller actual receiver in the PC, and you're putting your controller down, you're wondering how to turn it off. You actually can't turn it off. There isn't actually a button you can press and press and hold, like sometimes with some of these devices, you can press and hold the home button to completely shut it down. That isn't possible on this particular setup. Also as well, if you want to transfer from going from wireless gaming to wired gaming, and you want to do it quickly, you can't just unplug this section and plug in a USB. You have to wait for this to be unplugged, for it to go into the shutdown mode, and then plug in the USB and then it'll work as a normal USB controller. Just thought I'd make you guys aware of that. This is something which actually caught me out. I was in the middle of a Rocket League game and I was trying to switch between the two. And I thought, right, I'll just quickly unplug that, plug in the USB and use it as a USB controller. And it didn't want to do it because it hadn't gone through its shutdown process with the adapter. So there you go. There are my findings. I actually really like this controller. The, uh, the weight of it's really nice. It's got a really nice tactile feel to it. The camo is slightly grippy. It's not kind of that stuff that gets dirty easily, but there's definitely a kind of a texture to it. So it actually feels really nice in hand. And these sides, it just feels really ergonomic. It's based on the Xbox 360 design. So that's done really well for a lot of people for many, many years. And yeah, certainly uh, I like it a lot. So if you want to pick one of these up, uh, maybe a uh, Christmas stocking filler for someone, or maybe you just want a, a new controller for your own PC or PlayStation 3, or maybe for your Android device, whichever the case may be. Certainly for around about £20, I don't think you can go too far wrong with this, with the flexibility of wireless or wired use. Really, really handy. And yeah, I think it actually looks quite nice. It's something, one of those things that actually is, needs to grow on you, but yeah, I quite like it. And also as well, if you've got a couple of these lying around, at least you're gonna know which one's yours. So that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.